Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. You know, when we hear the name number one, we've been recently thinking about fitness watches, right? Because that's what they've been focusing on. But there's a few of you out there that remember a long time ago when number one stood for Android watches. Yeah, the original D5, things like that. Straight Android watches. Well, Good news is number one is back in the Android smartwatch market. Now I'm going to have you put on a different kind of thinking cap for a minute. We've all been thinking about the biggest and best 4G full outdoor viewing special kind of trans-reflective screens, huge, big multi-pixel, multi-memory, multi-processor, and hundreds of dollars. Well, at least 125 and higher. This is on the other end of the spectrum. Number one has come out with a an Android watch that's economical and looks like it's going to have good battery life. And this is it. It's called the K22. And this puppy is going to come in not at 100, I'm sounding like one of those guys on TV, aren't I? No, it's not going to be 100. No, you're not going to get it for 80. No, it's under 70. You today. Ah, oh, crap. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. Cut the hype. Here you go. Uh, $63. And there, that's before you take a coupon discount. If you want a nice Android, uh, really a full Android watch, it's only Android 4.4. It's only a 1.3 inch screen. It's only 240 by 240. But hey, if this is your first Android watch, this is a really good starter watch because I'm going to show you why. It's actually easier and better to navigate than many of the really high priced ones are. You know, the ones where to just get to the apps, you got to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and tap a button and go up and up and up and up and then tap another button and go over and over and over and launch your Facebook or something. Not with this one. So we're going to look at that in a minute for right now. Oh, by the way, uh, check the show notes down below. The only buying link I have for it right now is uh, through the uh, AliExpress number one official uh, storefront. And even there, it's only $63 and change. When all of the other vendors start getting this one, uh, we're going to have... Uh, competitive prices. I'll put it that way. And whoever has it uh, available and wants to give us a discount, I'll be listing their links as well. So no matter when you're watching this video, check in the show notes down below and hopefully you will see a link to an even better price. Nice that we can get a full Android watch for around 60 bucks. Here you go. That's all the uh, specs and information. We're going over it in the watch, so no need to cover it here. What else is in the box? When we open it up, we find we've got a, a manual <laughs> with a little sticky that they've put on the front to label it. All right, I'll buy that. Here's our standard four pin type connector that we're seeing on all the watches. I like it when it's standard. That means you can get extras of these, one for work, maybe even one for a car charger and another one at home. And then there's this card for after sale service. Whoa, all right. Number one is moving into a deeper respect for the customer and full support. And they've got this uh, way that you can have after service um, help. If you haven't found out already, and again, check the show notes, they've got all sorts of uh, social media uh, connections up there, blog posts and Facebooks and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, you can link into any of those for questions, or it looks like you can go and email them at after service at that address. Nice. All right, that's everything there. Let's take a look at it. You got a dial that's kind of like a KW88, but a little bit different. By the way, that's one of the most popular watches. It had numbers around it. Doesn't turn. The bezel doesn't turn. We have one button. We have non-removable leather bands. So this is not going to be something you want to go in the water with just for the band alone. Although it looks pretty solidly built. There's a speaker and charger port. Your heart rate monitor. I don't... Oh, there it is. The little microphone hole. Screws that hold the back on. Okay. And let's power it up. 
Oh, and the class, simple, easy class. Not a lot of uh, holes in it, so by the time you get to the last one, that's how big you are. Oh, that's tiny. So it should work for smaller uh, wristed people. And because it's a smaller diameter screen, it's also going to work really well for um, uh, folks with a smaller wrist. As it boots up, I'll give you a feel for that. You guys like how I'm pushing things together and doing things more than uh, one at a time so that we can move through these reviews faster? There it goes. It's doing its standard Android boot. Now, I want to tell you that the uh, way that Android has been implemented on this watch is different than we've seen on any of the other ones. So we're going to walk through it on this one. And I may be referring people over here for future watches that use the same layout and configuration, just simply so you can um, go here and I don't have to clutter it up in other reviews, reviewing the same thing over and over. I'm starting it out with my custom watch face. A lot of folks have said, where do you get that face? Um, it's one of them that I built experimenting. And you can go to our, um, our consolidated resource guide. There'll be a link to that in the show notes. Or you can go to, uh, what is it, tinyurl.com slash androidwatches. If you're just watching the video, go there. There's a zip file that has this one and a few other watch faces that... Uh, I've played around with. And of course, there's a whole bunch of custom watch faces that you can get into um, through a whole variety of sources. These are a lot of my faces that I've put in here, but I want to show you the generic ones that come with it and starting with the one that it would normally launch with. There, you're seeing them all. I'm not going to go into them on this video, but you get a feel for them. And there's their opening uh, screen. Uh, it's 10.35 in the morning. I have not found a way to do the AM, PM setting. So 22.35 will be, uh, you know, in the evening time. Uh, let's look at the layout. By the way, you see there's a little bit of a black bezel around it. Hey, it's 65 bucks, folks. Um, but there's the, uh, the screen. Doesn't look all that bad. When you slide down, you get this seconds count down here three two one boom and it's gone so we got to talk quickly when you pull this down there's the qr code you would scan uh oh that's bluetooth anyway fun fun fit is the uh uh is the app you're going to link to we'll talk about that briefly in a minute but that's the one that'll come up when you get into there there's your time date there's jeep <sighs> gps wi-fi and uh bluetooth are all the different things you see here. Notice we're not looking at SIM cards and Bluetooth call tethering or any of that stuff in this watch. It's a straight Android watch. So as far as phone calling and text messaging, mm, we'll have to see about that. So when I come down and I go to the left or go to the right, nothing happens. It's just a one-time pull. When you go to the left, you get into your uh, notifications if you have any. And you can clean them all by just tapping that button, and we will be without notice. When you go to the right, you get into your um, step count, and you see there's two little dots on that one, and that's no data, whatever is going there. I'm not sure if that's weather or related to the sporting activity, but you have that. So you have one, two, three, four things at this level, and when I go up, you get into this page where you can change your volume to vibrate mode, ringing mode, or silent mode. Um, we'll leave it in ringing mode for now. Here's where you can change the brightness from 1, 2, and 3. Even at 3, which is the brightest right now, it's not really, really bright. So you will be challenged seeing this one outside. Sorry, but that's the truth. It's not super bright. You have your volume, and this one times out quickly too. Your volume setting for the sound is right here. So you can quickly adjust the volume to meet your needs. You have Bluetooth that you can turn on uh, that will then set you up for doing your tethering to the FunFit app. And you have settings. And when you click here, you go into the overall settings, which we may as well cover right now. Your internet connection will go in here. You can open up Bluetooth, set up your Wi-Fi and GPS, but that's it. No uh, cellular stuff. Okay, there's the Wi-Fi. Hello, I don't want to go in there. Oh, you know what? 
I'm having trouble with all of this because there's no left and right uh, swiping. The swiping is down. That's how you get back. Not left, not right, but down. That's how you get back. Did I say that? That's how you get back. Swipe down. Okay. All of the internet connections are shown there, including GPS, which isn't really an internet connection, but they lumped it in there. Your power savings is right here for airplane mode. This is your turn your hand to see the screen, right? The, the, the time. And uh, you can turn on or off a level of screen automation as well. If power is not an issue, leave them turned on. Wireless, uh, tethering, and portal. Well, let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. We can turn on a Wi-Fi hotspot, which doesn't make much sense because you'd need to have cellular connectivity here in order to make it function as a hotspot for your tablet or something. Um, and this doesn't have any um, cellular capability, but it says it's a portable hotspot is active right now. Wow. <laughs> Bluetooth tethering, uh, not sharing this watch. It's internet connection, so um, we don't have that. And then hotspot and tethering is the IPv4. I think this is a generic version of uh, the Android operating system, and some aspects may not apply, in particular that one for our tethering. Hmm. Okay. Date and time, you got automatic date and time that you can do from the network or set it manually if you like to. If you do manually, you can set them right here. They're shaded out. Uh, you can set your time zone, but notice there's no setting for AM and PM in here, which is where it would be located. Uh-huh. Okay. Language and input. Our language is English, but if you wanted to, you could switch to any of these languages. We'll scroll through them to give you a feel for what's included. Looks like a very healthy list. These are all using English uh, characters. Now we're getting into some foreign characters. It starts to make it a little harder to read the language unless you know the language. And there you go. Those are all the different languages. Your default uh, keyboard, but you can install other keyboards if you want to. And it also is supporting Google Voice. See that? out of there. Sound now is your basic volume uh, controls, um, watch ringtones and default notification tones, lots of different tones you can set, your overall display, brightness level. Yeah, you have it on a slider where you have a, a more gradiated control over it than you did on those three settings, but I got it all the way up here. Uh, your style or your sleep time you can set it as low as 15 seconds and as much as only five minutes. It's not one of those watches that you can set for 30 minutes, folks. Style. This is the style for the third-party apps, whether they'll be in a square or whether they'll be full, fully round. Uh, and this is the place you set it. Usually that's on one of the scroll down or scroll over type of things where you can toggle. But haven't seen that there. So remember where this is, okay? Your inside settings, inside display, and style. That's where you'll make those changes if you can't see the menus on these sides. Then, after display, we get into uninstall. And you can see I've put in a few apps for testing. Uh, they came with WhatsApp and Facebook installed. Whoops. And this is where you would uninstall them if you want to. I'm not sure if you'll actually save any uh, memory to install other apps if you uninstall them. You might, uh, but when you reboot um, or restore, it'll always put them back in there again. We'll play with a little bit of this and a little bit of that toward the end of our, our presentation here. Security. You can actually set a screen lock on here and control the device administrators. And you want check mark for unknown sources if you're going to sideload applications by transferring from computer to your watch and then installing them from there, which is what I've done on a few of these. Um, your backup uh, information and your backup account information, and this is the standard Google stuff that you can back things up. And then about the watch, where you have your overall storage space. Now remember, this is an eight gigabyte storage, well, 7.17 gross, 
Um, the operating system takes that up. And look, internal, uh, it takes up 1.27. So your available to use is 4.91 uh, gigabytes. Now that internal storage, I'm not sure if that's going to be where your apps load when you install them. If it is, you may not be able to put a whole lot of apps because you'll run out of some space there. But if you can use them in the entire watch, then five gigabytes is quite a bit that you can use. But of course you can put your music and your um, videos and your pictures. There's no camera on this watch, but you can install pictures, watch faces, all those things can go in there. It's a $65 inexpensive Android watch without calling capability. It's there for just having fun. If you're not somebody that's gonna play Dick Tracy and be making calls from your arm or care about that, this might be the watch for you. Wireless updates would happen here. Your overall status is here. Battery levels, IMEIs, all these other things down. There we go. Legal information, your model number, the K22, and that's the current build number. It's, uh, what, 2317, 2324, so forth. That's what you can look at when you get yours to see if your number's higher, then you've probably got a newer build number to it. And that is everything in settings, and we got to that from here, right? Boom. So we've gone everywhere, but where? where's the apps, folks? It's an Android watch. Where are the apps? <laughs> I hate to tell you, but I, I looked forever on that. I even read the manual. Manual! We forgot to cover the manual. <laughs> I'm jumping all over the place. Maybe you'll see it in here, how you'll find the apps, because they're in there. The ones that I've installed, the ones that came with it, they're all in there. So take a look at the uh, manual and see who can figure it out first. All right? If you figure it out right now, put it in the, in the uh, comments uh, before I finish talking and um, you will be ahead of us. Of course, you won't see the comments until after I've published, but well, we're jumping time anyway. Okay, it's a tiny little manual. Here's warnings and notices and stuff. And then we're off to a different language. I didn't see it. Did you see it? All right, here's the trick. We press and hold to change the watch faces. Hello, there they go. There's just, there's a lot of them in here, which is why it's taking a while to gain access to this. But if I tap quickly, boom, I'm into the watch faces. How cool and fast is that? You don't have to go scrolling all over the place to get to your apps. It's got a tracker built into it. Here's the current steps and there's dots over here. So I can get to this page. Look, now we're getting to some fun stuff. You were getting disappointed it didn't have all the phone support, right? It's a fitness Android watch. You could have a beer if you want to, and that's with only walking 20 steps. I like this kind of watch. This is my third day. Well, I guess it's calculating everything that I've done up till now, and uh, if I haven't eaten anything else, I deserve a beer. Those are the three screens that you get. Come back up here, and then you got your clock which is a folder that has a stopwatch, the uh, alarms, and a timer. Not your watch faces, but those three aspects of using time in the clock section. Settings we went through. FunFit is the app. You can scan that QR code if you want to right now on your screen. It really works. Or you can just go to the Google... Um, Play Store and download FunFit. Like I said, we have reviews of that in other uh, videos and look in the show notes for uh, links that I'll put there that'll take you right to the point where I start reviewing the FunFit app. And uh, you, can, you can follow along right there. This watch has sleep time. You have to manually start it, but if you start it and wear it to bed, it's gonna tell you your hours and minutes of sleep time every night and give it to you right there. You have your contacts, which will suck up your Google contacts, so I won't go in there because I'm logged into Google. You'd have all my contacts, but there they are. But notice it's contacts, not calling. Uh, audio center is right here for a sound recorder and a music player to get an idea of the volume. 
we will record a little piece. Now notice the microphone's not bopping very much, so I'm going to bring it up and talk right to my wrist. This is me talking to my wrist, and I'm going to pick up bread at the store today. There we go, and now I'm back here. Let's hit stop. Let's hit play. Oh, it's really soft. Whoa, I barely heard it when I got loud. So you might have to offload your recordings in order to hear them. I don't know why they don't do that. That's uh, so unfortunate that they don't make the sound recorders volume boosted so that you can really hear them. But there you go. Music would be a uh, music player. Oh, cool. It's got some stuff in here that's probably um, ringtones. Yeah, you hear them? Again, it's really soft. I think the volume's up all the way on everything. Okay, well, it's playing that stuff. Something you can play with later. That's just to show you where they are. Health reminder. Oh, no. <laughs> all my sounds are still playing. I can't have anything competing with me. My goodness. Stop. How do I stop it? Ah, there we go. Pause. Stop. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, were you having fun? I hope so. Health. Health has got your sedentary reminder and um, drinking water reminder. They're just looping timers that you can go into and you can set them and run them and have it notify you, right? Then you got to the Google Play Store, which you can log into, download all your apps, have access to everything in there, update your apps. You have tools, which include a calculator, which is a simple little thing that has some nice big size digits on the screen that gives you answers. Okay. Then you've got uh, your calendar, but this is not your Google calendar, mind you. This is a simple monthly calendar. And you can't even pick a date, it doesn't look like. But it shows you today's date on the calendar. But that's it, just to get an idea of the days of the week. And then a browser, their own browser built in. But remember, it's an Android watch. You can download Chrome if you use that. Link all of your uh, tabs. And Safari or uh, uh, Firefox is awesome. If you guys haven't tried the new Firefox, wow, it's really good. Um, Remote control, this is where you set whether you're on Android or iPhone in order to do all of the uh, things that you're going to be doing, uh, like finding your phone and stuff like that. Watch management, this is a download area, and then this is your file manager. And I've got it loaded with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of apps, a bunch of watch faces. Um, out of the total 4.91 gigabytes, I still have 3.68 left. When you touch it, you go into it. And here is the clock skin folder where you can put all of your watch faces. Going to tell you something about those toward the end because uh, it doesn't quite work like other watches. There's a little bit of a glitch there. Multimedia, your gallery and your videos for pictures and videos. Again, there's no camera. Heart rate is here. And for once, number one has really improved in that if you are not touching the diode, if it's not on you, you're not going to get a reading, which is what we've wanted for a long, long time. No more reading Twinkies or bananas or cold cans of beer. It's going to actually read your pulse. I'm touching it with the tip of my finger now. Could be my nose, my toes, or most likely my wrist. I find, for me anyway, I get the best readings if I put it in a non-hairy area, okay? Hair just, uh, it can affect it. I don't know about this specific watch, but in general, the fleshy part of the hand is a good place, or like I say, the tip of your finger. I take it away and look, instantly it says it's an error. So it knows when you've been bad or good. It knows if you're awake, all of that stuff. It knows if you're touching it or not. The Compass, this watch not only has sleep monitoring in it, which most of them don't, but this has a built-in compass. And if I do the calibration, I'm sitting in the north. You guys know that. Uh, ooh, come on over, come on. I'm over here, here, point at me, come on. 
Over here. Over here. Mm. Mm. Oh, there you go. Okay. So maybe you have to kind of twirl it a little bit. Yeah, and then it'll point in the right direction. Don't just inch it over. Well, maybe we needed to oil the gimbals or something. Okay, it seems to be working fairly well. You've got a compass built into this. And now you got this whole voice search thing. And if we touch it, open compass. <clears throat> You're offline. All right. When I'm online, it should work. And... It goes into, of course, the Google thing. Style is what style you want. If you want list or if you want your icons appearing in four on a screen. We're doing the list version right now to move through them. And then more. And then your recent apps down here is where you can call up and close out or move to one of the other open apps. And then, of course, I'm not able to slide. Oh, I am. There. Slide to the left. That gets rid of them. Or hit close all. Okay, more. More is where we've got things like the and to to report. These are ones I've installed. And like I said, it comes pre-installed with Facebook and WhatsApp. Now tell me, folks, I'm not sure WhatsApp is supposed to be tied to your phone number and works on your phone that has the phone SIM card in it. And we're not doing SIM support. So I don't know because I don't use it. But if somebody does, tell us whether or not you can use WhatsApp on this watch, tethered to the phone or Wi-Fi connected, uh, and do your WhatsApp communications from your WhatsApp account that's part of your phone that has your SIM card in it. If you can, that'd be really cool. Facebook, of course, is just Facebook. You log into your account and you should have access there. AIDA64 is an installed app I put in there. We all know that one. If you've been around, this is going to show us. And notice it's in a square because I had it set up for that, not the full circle. It'll show you a little bit about this thing. This is the model K22. And here's some uh, background information on the uh, installed memory and RAM and so forth. Those of you technically inclined can take longer. I'm just going to whip through it. Okay, that's that stuff. Then if you go into the uh, CPU, we're using a dual core, it looks like, processor. Not super fast, but it hasn't been sluggish, has it? With the smaller screen and smaller pixels, we seem to be doing okay. 240 by 240 IPS display. Not... Uh, Transflective, you're not going to get it uh, like the Thor Pro, where you can actually read it outdoors in the bright sunlight. Um, of course, it's only a $65 watch. Oh, we just did display and network and so forth. So that's the information on this one. It does have a compass support in there, which is really nice to see. Um, not many have that, actually, even the expensive ones. When we go into the Antutu benchmarking, Okay, we got to get onto. I don't think we need to be on the network. It's just saying it's not available. And we can test it. Uh, we'll see, first of all, will it run the uh, 3D graphics component? There it's switching to 3D, and no, it's not going to do it. It looked like it's, uh, we can't even read the uh, dimensions it's trying to do it in, but 190 some odd pixels, that's because it's narrow this way. Oh, it is doing it. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It's got resolution words on top of it, but you see the graphics? Now, what we're looking for is... The smoothness, it's a little bit jerky. There is some sound coming out of it, but it's really soft. It's a transition there. You saw it go down and come back, and the transitions were smooth. There's the 3D twirling around. All right. Wow, for a 240 by 240 simple Android 4.4 dual core watch, this thing is um, pretty good. I'm impressed. Be curious what their Antutu um, final test score is. 
you know what? I'll just skip to that because you guys don't need to. It's just going to go on and on, and then it's going to come back. And all right, let's see what the score is. There you go. Yeah, rather respectable, eleven thousand seven hundred and eighty for a watch. Not too shabby, and uh, it gets the job done. And that is the N22 report. You can go ahead and pick it up directly from the DT number one AliExpress store. And as it starts to hit the other vendors out there, check again the show notes for links to uh, pick them up from those different vendors as well. And whatever price they can give us with coupon, I'm going to list them by lowest price first. So uh, right now, this is your choice. And that's not a bad price for this watch. It's got its limitations. And if you don't need those, for example, if you got a youngster, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, maybe a teenager, you don't want them to be having their phone and on the phone constantly, but they want to play with a little uh, relatively inexpensive Android watch without the need for SIM card or whatever, uh, here you go. This, this could be the solution. So it's fitting a little niche that's way down kind of on the lower end of Android smartwatches for price, capabilities, compass, fitness built into this thing without all the bells and whistles of 4G, LTE, and everything else. Well, we'll find out if, it, if it's uh, popular or not. Anyway, welcome back, number one. It's nice to see you guys are doing Android watches again, and uh, we will be turned with some more reviews shortly. <laughs>